guys, it's Ben from Myers Woodshop. I just got in a JTEC laser attachment for my Shea Poco 3 CNC. So let's open it up and take a look and see what we can laser. comes in the kit. So I have the laser. It's a 4.2 watt laser. This has the fully enclosed shroud in the front um, and it is the most powerful one JTEC sells at the moment. And I also have the Shea Poco side mount. This works with the socket dust boot. But right now this one I have is the prototype. Um, we're working together trying to get this dialed in just right for you guys so when you get it it'll be a hundred percent what's really awesome and different that JTEC has just put out about this mountain laser is that it actually has a magnet so that problem of connecting and disconnecting the laser when not in use is no longer a problem it's a really strong magnet it sticks on there and it's not coming off you can do a lot of shaking and it's not moving um, again, remember that this may not be the final version, but the magnet is definitely holding true. So I know a lot of people have wanted that, and JTEC has now delivered. So here is the controller board that we'll have to mount. It's got all the connector pieces, and that's one really nice thing. We have a power and a safety key, and it will not turn on without the key turned on, just like a, a car. You have all of the connection wiring here, and finally the power cord. It looks like a laptop brick, um, but it's got a, a plug-in to plug into your controller board and give the whole unit power. So you will need another outlet for this item. It will not run off the power of your uh, Shea Poco or X-Carve. Um, it does come with some glasses, but it's really nice that now the shield has uh, that protection as well. Also has zip ties, some bolts, and some zip tie connectors to keep all your wiring straight. And of course, danger, laser in use. This is a high powerful laser. You don't want to look directly at it. And a sticker and some instructions. So that's it. This is everything that comes in the kit. Now I'm going to show you how to install it. The first step is to remove the socket dust boot. Lower the arms for the socket and then remove the two bolts that hold in your router. Locate the laser mount and place it into the slot between the two pieces of metal on the mount. Replace the two bolts you removed and tighten. Then reinstall your socket dust boot. Place the laser onto the laser mount. It will connect via magnets. Place the danger sticker in a place that will remind you to wear glasses while operating this laser. Proudly display the JTEC sticker. Locate the two bolts holding on the cover to the board and remove them. You'll now remove each wire connecting to the board and you'll remove the two bolts holding the board to the rail. There's four bolts holding the board to the backing plate. 
remove those four. Then remove the bolts holding the backing plate to the rail. There's a heat sink between these two. Carefully remove the board from the backing. Now we'll reverse the steps we previously did. Attach the board to the backing plate. Attach the backing plate to the rail. Attach all the wires, but do not attach the cover at this time. To begin working with the controller module, we're going to have to remove the four bolts and nuts on the outside to separate the plastic. Take the cover of the controller module and lay it on the cover for the Shapoko board. We're going to line up the four holes and drill. I use a hole punch to start the hole so my drill bit won't travel. We're going to re-thread all the screws and then place the board onto the holes we created. We're going to come from behind and reattach all the nuts inside. Now we'll rerun the wires through the controller cover and then attach that cover back onto the shape hoko. The next part of running the wires through the chain is kind of a pain, but I found the easiest way is to open one side of the chain and then just feed the wires through it that way. We're working on one chain at a time, so the first one is just the lower chain. We're going to run both the laser and the control power wires through. Make sure to have enough wire hanging out the bottom to plug into the controller board. I leave a little extra just in case I need to adjust it later. Once you have all the wire run through, close all the chain links. Now we have to manipulate turning the corner. It's a little tough because the other wires for the Shapoka are in the way. I shoved both of them as far as I could into the next drag chain, and then once it stopped, I opened the links from there. Again, you have to open all the links to the chain from as far as you were able to shove the wires into the second drag chain. Now just work on pulling both of those wires up through the drag train out towards the top of the machine. And once you get the wires through, you can close the links. Now I've attached the laser to the front. Grabbing the wire from the laser, I wrap it around a few times and secure it with a zip tie. That way, in case you need any excess, you're still able to retrieve it easily. Now you'll plug in the laser wires to the wires you drag through the drag chain. The bigger one to the bigger one, the smaller one to the smaller one. Locate the zip tie holders, remove the backing, and push them against the rail, and they will stick. Then I took zip ties and attached the excess laser wire to the zip tie holder. Once you've done these steps, you're now ready to run the laser.
So now that I've had the laser for a while, I made a little bit of adjustments since installing it. As you can see from where my Shapoko sits in my shop, it's right up against the wall and the plate sits right in between 2x4 studs. That didn't give me much room for where the laser controller board sat. I've since removed that from where it was. I scooted it up to the front rail. I repeated that process by taking the plate and putting it on the side and drilling holes and then I tapped with a tap and now my laser sits up front a whole lot easier for me to access. So since I filmed the beginning of that, I've received the next version of the mount. It has some triangular plates up front and it does not bounce them as much as the previous version did. It still has the magnetic mount, so all you do is attach it just like that. We left the wires dangling up top because anytime you're not going to use it, you're going to want to remove it for safekeeping. All you'll do is unclick the bottom big fat wire and then the top small wire and then pull the laser off and now you're laser free. One other modification I made was I drilled a hole in the side of the mount right where my finger is pointing. I then tapped that hole so I can place a bolt from the new mount to where the router sits in on that mount. That way it just adds a little bit more uh, security and the less the laser can bounce the better off you'll be and you'll have more clarity when you're doing your burning. Overall, if you have a Shapoko or an X-Carve, this little laser add-on for $500 is a no-brainer. You already have a gigantic work surface with the CNC part. This part is really easy to attach, especially with the upcoming pin connector. That will remove the whole need to solder and take some of that fear out of the installation. This is a fantastic laser, however there are some limitations. This current model is only a 4.2 watt version. Don't expect to be cutting metal or plastic at a high rate of speed. It's going to take some time and it's going to take a few passes. I have also tried a product called Ceramark. You're going to see that out on the market that will allow you to etch and engrave onto certain metals. It will not work with this laser. That product really needs a 30 watt laser above and this is only a 4.2. This laser does a fantastic job at lasering onto wood. It also does plastics and foam and some metals. Um, it's really easy to use. It doesn't produce any harmful toxins except if you're cutting anything that happens to be harmful. It has a little fan on top that helps keep the laser cool. It's very quiet and it's very, very easy to use. If you can use your Shapoko, you can use this laser. You will have to download some programs. I'll leave links in the description below. There are some free ones and some paid ones. One option that I really like is Lightburn software. It's new to the market in a beta version, but I think it's by far the most enhanced software out there for lasers on the market today. Hope this video helped you install your JTEC laser. If you like what you saw, make sure to hit a thumbs up down below and subscribe. And if you have any questions for me, leave those in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, help you get up and running, lasering as fast as possible.